Jesus has said I Well, the Lord said I'll never, never leave you there me. Oh, Lord, that's a promise Divine word promise that never, never can fail Oh, oh heavenly, heavenly, heavenly son Y'all will look like you do Oh, heavenly, heavenly son Thank you for my soul My soul with his glory And his soul with his Gotta keep on singing his praises It's my Jesus, Jesus is my listen Oh, shadows around me And even though there are shadows of me Lord, it never comes to my My Savior, Savior my God Oh, don't you know that he is the light And the Lord can be found upon me so I, I'm walking I'm so close, close to his side. Oh, 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 heavenly, heavenly, y'all the mother like the good, oh, heavenly, so I to keep blood in my soul, blood in my soul, with his glory, glory divine, so divine, oh, Lord, each and every day of my life, cause gotta keep rejoicing, gotta keep Bye. 
So cool inside. Don't you want to go? Where is cool inside? Dum 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 dum. Where you'll always cry when life 
Honest it is, honest it is, honest it is. 
Good morning, family. It is good that God has blessed us yet again with life on this day, and you and I ought to be extremely thankful uh, that a God that sits in heaven uh, thinks about us and is concerned about us on a daily basis. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 27, 27th chapter, verse number one, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? Church, I want you to know this morning that our light is the almighty God that leads us in a world that is filled with so much darkness, a world that is filled with so much pain, a world that is filled with so much confusion, so much ruckus and rampus, a world that uh, seems to have been turned upside down in various ways, but God is our light. He is the one that guides us on uh, this uh, very dark journey, uh, this journey from earth to heaven. He is our light, and he is our salvation, and I'm so glad that I can call him my father. I'm so glad that I know that he is the light of my life, and I know that he is the light of your light. I know that you know that he is your light and he is your salvation. I want you to know that even in this world of darkness, even in this world of sad uh, times and despair and depression, even in this time of agony and uh, injustice, uh, we know that God is the light in this dark world and he is guiding us on our way. He's not just our light, he's our salvation. So whom shall I be afraid of? In whom shall we fear? Church, it's good to be here on this day to uh, present to you all another lesson, uh, another word from God. Uh, you know, the Bible says in 1 Peter, the fourth chapter, verse number 11, it says, if any man speak, uh, let him speak as an oracles of God. And that simply means that the preacher ought to utter the word of God, uh, not a philosophy, not what he thinks, not what he feels, or uh, not what makes uh, the people feel good but what the word of God said. And you can, uh, you can best believe that this preacher is going to do nothing but speak uh, the unadulterated word of God, which is able to save the soul of all mankind. Thank you for being here. For those who are visiting with us on this broadcast, we are so glad that you are present with us. We thank you for tuning in uh, to the East Side Church of Christ online broadcast, whether you're doing it through Facebook, uh, whether you're doing it through YouTube, uh, we thank you for participating in this broadcast, participating in our worship service. The Bible says in John the fourth chapter, verse number 24, we are to worship him in spirit and in truth. And that is what we plan on doing today. So I'm asking all of the family and uh, those who are viewing friends and uh, to uh, please join in with us in this worship service and help in worshiping him in spirit and in truth. God has really been good to us on uh, this day. Uh, listen, uh, I want to first uh, send out a acknowledgement of, uh, of victory or a triumph uh, per se. Uh, Sister uh, uh, Banks, Carmelita Banks had called us uh, uh, last week and uh, told her about her brother who had been admitted into, into the hospital 
uh, with this dreaded COVID-19 virus that is uh, plaguing this entire nation, this entire world. Uh, we went to work right away, placing information on our band and about praying uh, for Andre Banks. And I want you to know that I got a call from Sister Banks and uh, Andre is now out of the hospital. Uh, he is uh, free from this virus and uh, that's a hallelujah old amen to let you know that prayer does work. Uh, the Bible says in James the fifth chapter verse number 15, uh, 16, confess your faults one to another uh, that you be healed. Uh, the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man availed much. Church, our responsibility is to pray for each other. And I'm so proud to know uh, that I am a participant in, with this congregation in praying for those who uh, this de disease has attacked. Thank you so much for that. Sister Banks thanks you for that. And we thank the Almighty God for that, for hearing the prayers of, of the righteous. God has truly been good to us. We know we live and we move and we have our very being simply because who he is. Church, if you will, turn your Bibles to Ephesians. Turn your devices or swipe your devices to Ephesians in the New Testament. Ephesians, the uh, second chapter. Ephesians, the second chapter. We will begin reading at verse number 12 and we'll conclude the reading at verse number 19. Here is what the word of God says. Therefore, or rather remember that you were at times separated from Christ, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers or aliens to the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in this world. Verse number 13 says, but now in Christ Jesus, you who formerly were far off have been brought near by the blood of Jesus the Christ. For he himself is our peace, who made both groups into one and broken down or broke down the barrier of the dividing wall. Verse number 15 says, by abolishing in his flesh the enmity, which is the law of commandments contained in the audience, so that in himself he might make the two into one new man, thus establishing peace. And I and might reconcile them both in one body to God through the cross by it having put to death enmity. <clears throat> Verse 17 and 18 says, And he came and preached peace to you who were afar off, and peace to those who were near. For through him we bought we bought through him we both have our access in one spirit. To the Father. Verse number 19 says, So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and are of God's household. The tag for this morning lesson is one household adopted. Church, I want you to know that we are adopted into one household. <laughs> I want you to understand that uh, we live in a world that has such great confusion. And if you've been in tuned into uh, uh, the, the news here lately, you have seen the struggles uh, that we as a nation have. Uh, we've seen uh, the disturbing images. Uh, we've seen uh, the things that have plagued us uh, for the past three months when it deals with this COVID-19, this coronavirus, uh, we see the imageries on the news of uh, men who have no respect for human life take the life of another human being. Church, I want you to, 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 to hear something here. Generations after the 1954 Brown school desegregation decision, the Civil Rights Act of 1964, 
and the Voting Rights Acts of 1965, racial discrimination continues in our country. Everywhere you look, from every state in the union, generations have passed. And in our country, in our nation, racial discrimination still exists. The Oxford uh, Dictionary of Words uh, describe racism or define racism as prejudice, discrimination, or an antagonized, an antagonizement uh, directed against uh, someone of a different race. Listen to this, someone of, of a different race based on the belief that one's own race is superior. Church, I want us to understand that what we're seeing is not anything new. Uh, whether we go back generation after generation, whether we go back century after century, what we're seeing today is nothing new. Matter of fact, in our text, Paul spoke of the fact that the Jews were discriminating against of the Gentiles. For some reason, the Jews thought uh, that they were a superior a race. Uh, they were of a superior uh, being. Uh, they thought they were better uh, than the Gentiles. Uh, they thought that they uh, looked better, they walked better, they talked better, uh, their hope was intact. Uh, their peace was intact. Uh, their reconciliation uh, was completed. Their citizenship was stamped and signed. The adoption papers were completed. And therefore, they thought that so because they were in the position that they were in, it made them to be a better race. They saw themselves as being superior over any other race of people. He saw the Gentiles as being inferior. Uh, they saw the Gentiles as being less than them. Uh, they saw themselves as being better than them. Church, I want you to know that despite the things that we see in the news today, despite the things that we see on television, despite the, despite the things that we see on our, our, on our, on our devices, our iPhones, our iPads, our computers, the Despite the imagery that we see, I still want us to know that God is still in charge. God still reigns. God still sits on the throne despite of the negative imagery that we see on a daily basis. Church, I want you to know the reason why this exists is because of the influence of Satan he has an influence over this world. You remember in Matthew the fourth chapter, he took Jesus up to a high place after his baptism, after being a fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And you and I know Jesus was hungry, he was thirsty, and Satan came and tempted him and said, look at this massive world, this great world. If you bow down and worship me, I will give all of this unto you. Not that Satan created the world. Not that he had anything to do uh, with the creation. But it was because of his influence over the world that he said to Jesus, I will give his possession. Not that he created it, but he owns this world by the influence that he has over this world. Church, I want us to know that Satan does not have board meetings with his demons, with his angels to say that man has figured uh, this racism piece out. Uh, they have learned to work together. They learn to become colorblind. Uh, they don't uh, see color and, uh, uh, and, and use uh, their color as a uh, a place of saying that my color is more superior than your color or my race is more uh, superior than uh, your race. Satan does not sit and say, man, let's figure it out. It's a tactic that Satan uses because it's a tactic that works. 
And as long as we as Christians do not try to break down the separation that exists between us, then Satan will continue to use it. Look at our text. Look at verse number 12. It says, remember that you were at times separated from Christ, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope without God in this world. Church, friend, beloved, I want you to know that when Paul was speaking, he was speaking to the Gentiles. He was speaking about their separation. A matter of fact, he said they had no commonwealth in Israel, so they were not a part of the community. They were not a part of the citizenship of Israel. Uh, they had been separated uh, from uh, the hope. Uh, you remember Ephesians, the second chapter, uh, verse number two, uh, last week it said, we spoke on this and it said, where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world. Uh, according to the course of this world. Uh, you remember that he spoke about the trespasses and uh, the transgression uh, that existed in those who were not in this community. Uh, they were not a part of this uh, citizenship. Uh, they were not a part of this commonwealth of Israel. Therefore, they were separated. Paul was saying, I want you to remember uh, that there was no privilege for you. A church, do you understand? Did you hear me? A Paul is trying to get the Gentiles to remember that they were not in a privileged environment. They were not part of being privileged. Uh, they didn't have the things of the community, the things that uh, were the commonwealth of uh, Israel, the citizenship that gave them uh, 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 the things that were uh, there for that citizenship. It, 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 remember, they were not privileged. They were separated. The Gentiles were without the hope of the Messiah. I'm here today to let you know that everybody that is outside of the body of Christ is outside of the hope of the Almighty God. Paul is trying to let the Gentiles know that there is no hope. They had no hope in Christ Jesus because there was no citizenship and because there was no citizenship, there was no common wealth. They didn't have the things that the Jews had. Oh my goodness. But don't you love verse number 13 when you continue to read. In verse number 13 it said, but now. Did you hear that church? Friends, family, beloved. It says, but now. In Christ Jesus, you who were a family afar off have been brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ, for he himself is our peace, who made both groups into one and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall. Church, friends, beloved, but now you are in Christ Jesus. But now all things have passed away. All of the old things have passed away. But now you are in Christ Jesus. And because you are in Christ Jesus, you now have peace. You now have hope. You are part of the community. You enjoy the common work of not only what the Jews had, but now everybody is enjoying the benefits of being in the citizenship of God. Now, you are an adopted child of God. Now, you no longer work after the work because of the father of the devil. Uh, you no longer have him as the father. Uh, and say amen. Uh, many of us, all of us know at some point in time, according to John the 8th chapter, verse number 44, uh, we did the desires of the father. Paul is saying, no longer are you separated but in Christ Jesus 
And we know that Romans the 8th chapter verse number 1 said there now, therefore now there is no more condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but walk after the spirit. It's so good to know that we are in Christ Jesus. And I want you to know that he died. Jesus died. And when he died on the cross, according to both verse number 14, he died for both the Jews and the Gentiles, and he became a peace offering to reconcile both to God and to each other. He brought us together. He brought the Jews together. He brought the Gentiles together. He brought them together in one house, in one body. Remember, the Jews they regarded the Gentiles with hatred and the Gentiles regarded the Jews with contempt. Now they are at peace. They now worship the same God. They now have the same Savior. They now depend on uh, the same God. Uh, they depend on the same atonement. They look forward to the same heaven. Uh, they belong to the same household. Did you hear me? They belong to the same household. They are the same adopted brothers and sisters with the same inheritance. Reconciliation has not only taken place with God, but reconciliation has taken place with each other. Church, it would be an amazing thing if in this day and time in 2020 in the United States of America uh, that we can see reconciliation amongst all races of people. We see reconciliation amongst the Jews and the Gentile. It's possible for us to see reconciliation amongst us in God's world, in this society, in this nation, in this state of Missouri, in this metropolitan area of Kansas City, we can see reconciliation. We can be joined together in one household with a common goal. But that only happens when all are in Christ Jesus. Church, look at what Verse number 16, 15 says, he says, by abolishing in his flesh the enmity, which is the law of commandments contained in the audiences, so in himself he might make the two into one new man, thus establishing peace. Church, I want you to know that when you're in Christ Jesus, You are of a new humanity. Turn your Bible to 1 Peter, the second chapter, verse number 9. And if you look at 1 Peter, the second chapter, verse number 9, you will see that we have become a new humanity, a new race of people, uh, no more being black, uh, no more being white, uh, no more uh, being Asian, no more being Hispanic, whatever the case, we are a new humanity. We are a new people, a new manhood. Look at what Peter said. He said in verse number nine, first Peter second chapter, verse number nine, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. We are now a people of God, God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellence of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Church, we are a new humanity. We are a new race. We are a new people. We are God's possession. We are his peculiar people, which are God's possession. Look at verse number 10. He said, for you were not a people. You were not a people. But not you are the people of God. But now you are the people of God. You have you have not received mercy. But now you have received mercy. 
Church, I want you to know that at one point in time, you and I were outside of the body of Christ. You and I uh, were like orphans. Uh, we were uncircumcised. Uh, you and I had no inheritance. Uh, we were dead in our trespasses. We were dead in our sins. We were children of wrath. But now we are in Christ Jesus. But now the separation has been closed. And now we enjoy the benefits of the commonwealth. All of us, both Jews and Gentile, regardless of our race, regardless of our heritage, regardless of where we were born, whether we were born in the north, whether we were born in the south, regardless of our skin pigmentation, we are now a new race of people, a new humanity, a royal priesthood, a possessed people who we belong to God. Church, we are all adopted brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Galatians, the third chapter, Paul puts it this way when he talks about the adoption and how all of us are of the one race. In the third chapter of Galatians, verse number 28, he said, There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free man. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. We are all one in Christ Jesus. So what is the application of this lesson this morning? We've got to be diligent about convincing or persuading people to be one and be adopted in the household of God. The one household of God. Church, the best way to change alienated minds is to bring them to the cross. The best way to change alienated minds is to bring them to the Savior. Friends, the best way to change an alienated mind is to bring men to Jesus the Christ. The work of the atonement is designed to produce peace. I think I said something. Hallelujah, amen. The work of the atonement is designed to produce Peace. Listen. Look at verse number six, uh, verse number sixteen. It says, "And might reconcile them both in one body to God through the cross by had, by it having put to death enmity." Look at verse number seventeen. And he came and he preached peace to you and who are far off, and peace. To those who were near. Church, friends, beloved family, when Christ died on the cross, the atoning blood of Christ brought peace into this world. Church, I want you to see that this word peace comes from the Greek word which is irene. Irene. Uh, e i r e n e, irene. This a Greek verb means to bind or to join together what is broken or what is divided. It is creating a new union. It means that there is peace, and the antonym of peace is war. Uh, so when there is peace, there is the absence of war. Uh, listen, I I'm trying to get us to understand that in this world, in this society we live in, there can be peace in this world. That peace was brought into the world by the Savior, by the Messiah, by Jesus the Christ. 
Church, listen. There's some joining together that needs to take place. There is some binding together that needs to take place. There has to be peace. And that peace exists in one household. Look at verse number 19 of our text. He said, though then that you are no longer strangers, you are no longer aliens, you are no longer alienated, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and are of God's household. See, in God's household, there is no separation. In God's household, there is no division. In God's household, there is peace. There is irene. There is irene. There is no brokenness. There is no division in God's household. White can be in this house. The white race can be in this house. The black race can be in this house. Asians can be in this house. Hispanic can be in this house. Every nation, every race of nation on this planet can be in this house and there can be no division. There is no separation. There is no war. There is only peace. And this peace is brought into this world when we share the word of God with the lost. We try to change the alienated minds. And we change the alienated mind by bringing them to Christ Jesus, by bringing them to the cross, by bringing them to the atonement blood of Jesus the Christ. Church, I want us to understand today that we live in a world where racism exists. We see it. The disgusting images that we see in it, it would, it would, uh, it would cause such uh, 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 that has caused such great pain in this world that we see today. But I'm here to tell you that there can be peace. I'm here to tell you that that separation can be closed. I'm here to tell you that if Jews and Gentiles can live together in peace, it can be done in this society as well. But it takes us as Christians to be able to share the word of God and bring people to Christ. You remember in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verse number four, verse number four through six, there is one body, there is one spirit, just also as you were called into one hope of your calling, there's one Lord. We know there's one Lord. We know there's one faith. We know there's one baptism. We know there's one God and Father of all who is up, who is over all and through all and in all. We know that there is one body. And because there is one body, there is one household. And all of us are adopted into this one household. I want you to know that when we're in this one household, there ought to be peace. There ought to be peace in this household. There should be no division because of our skin pigmentation, because of our uh, 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 status in this life, because of the fame that one has. Or There shouldn't be any difference or division or separation because of uh, the fortune that another has and, uh, 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 and then one that doesn't. There should be no despair or no separation because of my education, I have a doctrine, and you didn't graduate from high school beyond uh, the 10th grade. Uh, there should not be any division. No separation. I'm talking about the one house that you and I have been adopted into. And I'm talking about bringing those who are lost in this world into this house. Generations. After the 1954 Brown School desegregation decision, after the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the Voting Rights Act of 1965, racial discrimination continues in our country because we are separated from God. Because we are not in the one household. Because many are under the leadership of the influencer of this world, Satan. 
They choose to do the desires of their father, who is Satan. But I want you to know this morning that you and I have hope. We have the expectations of peace and the peace offering that has been given to us is when Jesus died on the cross to bring us all into the one body, all into the one household, all into the one church that makes us as a new humanity, a new race of people, a possess possession of the almighty God. Church, we want to see the violence in on the streets and uh, this racial disparity that exists in our country. We need to bring folks into the house regardless of the skin pigmentation. We've got to understand that God created all things. He created all things for his purpose. If you look at Colossians, the first chapter, verse number 15 and 16, he said, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of creation. Verse number 16, he said, for by him all things were created, both in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers of authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Everything that God created is for his purpose. He created me for his purpose. He created you for his purpose. He created all works of life for his purpose. He created them. Church, God loves his creation. And because he loves his creation, you and I ought to love his creation as well. God loves his creation, and we ought to love his creation as well. He loves everybody. We are one new humanity who've been adopted into the one house of God. We want to cure this problem in this world, in this nation with racism, we need to be persuasive. We need to be convincing. We need to close the separation. We need to have everybody enjoy the commonwealth and be in the community and be a part of the citizenship of heaven. How do we do that? We just open our mouths and we talk to people. How do we do that? We be an example of who Jesus Christ was. How do we do that? We tell them about the death, the burial and resurrection of Jesus the Christ. How do we do that? We tell them about uh, his reconciliation. We tell them about his atoning blood. We tell them about the citizenship of heaven. How do we do that? We baptize them in the name of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. How do we do that? We continue to teach them about God, his commandment. How do we do it? We just keep on keeping on. How do we do it? We keep on loving each other. How do we do it? We keep loving those in the church. How do we do it? We keep loving those outside of the church. We love God's creation. We love his creation because he loves it. And because he loves it, you and I ought to love it too. Adopt it. In the one house. Church, we need to be village uh, about taking the word uh, to uh, those in, that are lost in this world. Diligent in speaking about his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Diligent about bringing souls to Christ. And when we do that, we'll see a nation begin to come. We'll see a nation that's at war. Now, peace and tranquility and quietness, no ruckus, no rampus, no division, they're joined together, no discord, no fighting, but a family in one household who are here to bring others into that household. That's how we cure racism, not through protests. Most definitely not through riots, not through uh, reform, whether it be government reform or uh, school reform, whatever the case. Not by replacing the Republican president with a Democratic president, 
not by switching the number of houses or seats that are held in the Senate, whether on the blue side or the red side, not by who you vote into Congress, not by uh, what we do at City Hall, it's by bringing and winning souls to Christ. It's time for us to go to work now, church. Friend, beloved, it's time for us to be diligent in our efforts in bringing souls to Christ. It's time for us to be able to close that separation, the separation that existed to over 2,000 years ago between Jews and Gentiles. One of the most perfect examples of racism that ever existed in the Bible. We can close that separation by winning souls to Christ. You heard the word of God on today. I hope and I trust and I pray that there's been something that has been said today that will help you along your journey from earth to heaven. Something that has been said today that will help you be able to persuade or to convince others to join this household, to be added to this household by being baptized. Church, I want you to send in your responses, your prayer requests now. A slide should be present here in just a second that will tell you the number that you can call. Uh, that number is 816-525-3626. Any prayer request that you have, uh, please send those prayer requests in to us. Uh, prayer requests. I, I know we have the offering slide up, but we're going to change that when we're going to get to the prayer request slide so you can uh, see the a number there again. The number is 816-525-3626. And as your prayer requests are coming in, uh, please send your prayer request in. I, I want us to know that if there's someone that wants to be baptized today, uh, somebody who is outside of the body of Christ, someone who uh, needs that separation closed, someone who uh, needs to have hope, uh, someone who needs that peace in their lives, uh, someone who is looking to be adopted and enjoy the inheritance uh, that is coming, someone who wants to know that there is hope, someone who now knows that there's confidence, there's faith and there is nothing to anticipate but hope and trust and faith in the Almighty God. Somebody out there who uh, wants to uh, have peace in their life. Someone who wants to know that there is a new union. Uh, they know that they want to be a part of the new humanity. They want to be a part of that royal nation, that priesthood. They want to be that possession of God. Here's how you do that. The first thing you have to do is you have to believe. You have to believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sin. Paul said it best in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verse number 1 through 4, where he talked about believing in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus the Christ. One has to hear the word of God. The Bible says in Romans, the 10th chapter, verse number 17, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. One has to confess the sweetest name that ever rolled off mortal tongue. That is, that they believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. One of the best examples of that in the scriptures is in Acts the 8th chapter, verse number 26 through 40, where uh, uh, the Philip met an Ethiopian eunuch, taught him the gospel, and he said, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? The Ethiopian eunuch said, yes, I do, and said, here is water. What do hinder me from being baptized? One must be baptized as well in order to be in the family of God, in order to be in the household of God, in order to, for those adoption papers to be secured with the proper signatures from the Holy Spirit, the proper stamp from the blood of Jesus the Christ, and the authorization by the Almighty God. The Holy Spirit has stamped the adoption papers and have made us a part of the family of God, a part 
of the household of God, a part of the commonwealth of God, a part of the community of God. We are now a part of the citizenship in heaven. And then one must live faithfully until they leave this time side of life, according to Revelation, the second chapter, verse number 10. There's someone that wants to be baptized. We're ready to baptize you right now. Uh, the water is ready. All of the clothing that is ready. We want you to come. Please send your prayer request in. Uh, we got a prayer request uh, from... Um, Here we go. We got a prayer request from Someone said, pray for them for, uh, ha for maintaining peace, love, and harmony in this world. Pray for me and that God stay by my side through these trials. Uh, please, whoever sent that prayer request in on the line, just go ahead and send, uh, let me know who you are. Uh, that's Sister Natalie. Sister Natalie sent that prayer request. Thank you, Sister Natalie. Uh, Sister Gina uh, Burgeon said, pray for me and Andre Banks and the Banks family. And uh, Jametta, pray for her. Uh, Sister Stephanie Johnson says, pray for Alicia. Please pray for her safety. Uh, she's on her way back to college or going back to college. Pray for Tim Johnson Jr. His 18th birthday is June the 3rd. We'll be praying for him. What are your prayer requests and your prayer request in? I'm going to request that Brother Schofield pray for this world, pray for our nation, pray for all those who've been infected by this COVID-19. Pray for our nation and this disparity from the racial inequality, the, uh, the things that we have seen over the past few months in the news and pray that this world, that this nation will have some reconciliation that there will be real peace, that we will really join together for a united effort of winning souls to Christ, regardless of our skin pigmentation, regardless of our education, regardless of our financial status, regardless of the fame and fortune that we have. Are there any other prayer requests? Are there any other prayer requests? What are your prayer requests? Pray for Brother Roper and Sister Roper. Brother Roper is a member of the Peculiar Church of Christ. He had his leg amputated uh, two weeks ago. Uh, his wife is legally blind. Uh, he is still in the hospital. So uh, from what I understand, he's been doing well. But please do continue to pray for him and his family. Please send your prayer requests if there are no other prayer requests. Brother Schofield is going to uh, lead us in prayer. Good morning, brothers, sisters, and visiting friends. We we'll appreciate you all for tuning in to our virtual worship on today. At this time, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. 
Father, we come to it this hour to say thank you. We love you and we appreciate you. We thank you, Father, for your grace, your mercy, and your love. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity to worship you in spirit and most of all in truth. Father, during these uncertain times, we need your help to remain focused, to realize that we must never give up on you nor give up on oneself, knowing that we are striving to make heaven our home. Father, we are coming to you at this hour to say thank you for the words that we have heard this morning. Uh, we ask him, Father, that you bless the Wallace family as a whole, bless the message that we are able to apply those things as we move forward throughout this life. Father, we have a special blessing for the Johnson family um, and Denise that they stand in need of, for the daughter who has reached um, her destination back to college, that you be with her through these times, that you give her the strength, courage, and confidence to endure the process, gain all that she can in her educational status, and be able to use those things in the way that you see fit for your glorification. We ask a special blessing for Tim Johnson, who has a birthday coming up, that you be with the family, that they're able to uh, celebrate and uh, be able to uh, join together in things that will be beneficial for the Johnson family and also continue to bless that family as they are striving to continue to make heaven their home. We ask a special blessing for Natalie and her request for this world, for this nation, for her family, for her friends, for her loved ones. Be with them, guide them, strengthen them. We ask a special blessing for the Roper family, the wife who is ill, um, the husband who is still hospitalized, that you be with them in all shapes, all forms, and all fashions. We ask a special blessing for this nation as a whole because we need your help as your children to go out into this world and proclaim your good news and to live the appropriate lifestyle that the examples that we set through our lifestyle will draw men and women, boy and girl, unto you. And Father, we pray for the leadership of this world that they are making the proper decisions that is best fit for the nation. We ask a special blessing, Father, for the church across this world that we are continuing to remain firm and strong strong no matter what we have to face and identifying the things that you give us as tools and resources to continue to spread your word to glorify thy name and to realize that you have called us out of the darkness to live in the marvelous light and to have life more abundantly father we ask in a special blessing for the east side church of christ here in lee summit missouri that you be with us be with our leadership here be with our mindsets be with the membership and we ask him father as we are preparing for expansion that you give us the tools and resources to prepare well and to embrace the opportunity as it arrives. Father, thank you for this worship hour, and we're asking that all these things um, be answered and done in Jesus' name. Amen. We have arrived at another item of worship, which is the Lord's Supper, as known as the Communion. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts, chapter number 20, verse number 7, for upon the first day of the week, when disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. The Bible also explains to us in 1 Corinthians, chapter number 11, verse 23 through 26, what these two items represent. We have the bread that represents Jesus' body. We have the cup that represents the fruit of the vine, the blood that was shed for the remission of sins. In verse number 26 of that same chapter, it says, as often as we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup, we do show the Lord's death until he come. At this time, let us pray over these two items of worship. Father, we come to you at this hour to say thank you for dying for the sins and for this nation as a whole. We ask him, Father, that you be with us as we commune at this hour, taking up the bread that represents your body that was broken and the fruit of the vine that was shed as blood for the remission of sins. Father, we love you and we appreciate you. It's in Jesus' name we ask and offer this prayer through faith. Amen. Yeah. 
Brothers and sisters, visiting friends, we arrive at another item of worship, which is giving back what God has blessed us to give. We trust and pray that you all have able to uh, take up the Lord's Supper at this time as we enter the collection. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter number 20, verse number 35, that it is better to give than to receive. Also in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1 and 2, the Bible says, Now concerning the collection for the saints. As I have given orders to the church of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. During these times, we still must continue to give and support the kingdom of God. And we are thankful of those who are continuing to send their contributions in for the edification and the upbuilding of God's kingdom. Those who may be visiting, those who are continuing to give, we appreciate you. We love you, um, not because you give, but you are allowing God to use you in the fashion that he see fit. And we thank you. Um, at this time, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come to this hour to say thank you. We love you. We we'll appreciate you. Thank you for this opportunity to give back what you have blessed us to give. We ask you, Father, that we give in a loving and cheerful manner. Continue to be consistent givers because you love us and our love for you must continue to grow and flourish. And in those things, we know that um, these funds will be used for the upkeep and the spreading of your word and the edification of your body. And Father, we thank you for the jobs that you have given us to give and all the resources that you provide for us to give back to you. It's in Jesus' name we ask and offer this prayer through faith. Amen. Now, there are several ways that you can give. We have the information on the screen. We have the text to give, which is a very convenient way um, to simply text the number or text the number that's on the screen and give what you uh, have a desire to give. And also we have Givelify that you can find on our website. Um, just simply go to the Eastside Church of Christ, Lee Summit, Missouri um, website, and you'll be able to find the link for the process of giving back uh, what God has blessed us to give. Um, also, you can mail in your checks uh, to the church address that's on the screen as well. And once again, we we'll appreciate everybody for your support and what you are doing to continue to edify God's kingdom, be loving and cheerful givers, and to be consistent in what God commands for us to do. Changing hand, changing hand. If 
you better now. Oh, hold on. To his hand. Hold on. To God's son changing hand. You ought to hold on to his hand. Hold on. To God's son changing hand. I know. Brothers, sisters, and visiting friends, we have arrived at the conclusion of our virtual worship on this hour. We appreciate everyone for tuning in with us. Please continue to invite people to tune in, to hear a portion of God's word, to get the things that they need, the tools and resources to be successful on this journey. Continue to invite people, those who are not members of the body, that they may hear and understand God's word and to take on his plan of salvation. Uh, we appreciate Brother Anson Wallace for that great message on today, uh, the adoption process and realizing that we all should want to be within God's family. Uh, we just have a few couple of announcements and then we're going to close out for the worship on today. Uh, we had a great time on yesterday with our Fresh Start Saturday devotion. We had a guest speaker all the way from Detroit, Michigan, in the presence of David Calhoun, the youth minister there at the Oakland Church of Christ. And we... Um, We'll look forward for this coming Saturday, another powerful Fresh Start Saturday devotion. Uh, we got a surprise for everyone, so we want everyone to tune in. Definitely invite some people to come and be a part of that via Facebook Live. Also on Thursday, we have our T-Bone Thursday devotion, something that will help enrich all to uh, be more strong and focused throughout Thursday, preparing for the weekend. That will start at 8 o'clock Thursday morning. So set your alarms clock, be in tune with the T-Bone Thursday devotion. Also on Friday, we have another devotion at 3.30 p.m. And that's entitled Fresh Herb Friday. Something to get everybody prepared for the weekend and use some tools that they can use for the journey um, as they continue to make heaven their home. Also on Saturday, as I mentioned, is Fresh Start Saturday Devotion. Um, is something that we do to bridge the gap with the younger audience as well as the older audience. And that will be at 1 p.m. on Saturday, this coming Saturday. All these things will be done through Facebook Live. Definitely tune in and check us out. And also, do not forget about our Wednesday night prayer line that starts at 7 um, o'clock. We do it now through via Zoom. So definitely please check out the band. We'll have the information of all these things throughout the course of this week. And once again, we ask that you all be safe, be focused, and we have some updates coming in the near future of when we'll be able to um, reassemble. At this time, we're going to ask Brother Anson Wallace to lead us out in a closing prayer. Again, we thank you so much for participating in this uh, broadcast, this worship service, and as Brother Schofield said, I want to put some emphasis on that uh, to the friends, the family, uh, those that are not members of the Church of Christ. We thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we ask that you participate uh, with us again. And if you are wanting to uh, be in our Wednesday night uh, devotion service as well as prayer service, just let us know. Send us a message at 816-525-3626, and we will send you the information to join us uh, via Zoom on that uh, devotion and prayer service. We're in times where uh, we need to be praying and we need to pray uh, individually and collectively as a church. We need to open up uh, the ears of God so that he will be able to hear our prayers and answer our prayers. But we definitely need to be doing that right now. So we thank you again for participating. We thank you for those who, again, who are sending the resources in to help us to edify and build up the kingdom of God. We thank you for that. We appreciate you for that. 
Uh, and we do ask you con to, to continue, continue to do that. Uh, so let's, uh, let us close in prayer. Sister, uh, before we uh, close, Sister um, Angie Smith did uh, send in a prayer request. She's uh, praying, for, praying for prayer for her family and also for Terry Smith's brother and his uh, sister-in-law who moved uh, to Kansas, the Kansas City area from Mississippi. So we want to pray for them as well. Uh, let us pray. Our dear God in heaven, it is again you've given us an opportunity to be able to approach your throne, God. And we thank you for that. Uh, we give you all the honor. We give you all the praise, God, because we know uh, that you are the reverent one. And God, therefore, that means that you are the awesome one. And there is no one greater than you. And God, we pray to you because we know that you can answer every one of our prayers. So God, this day we come to you on the behalf of the Smith family. Angie Smith has sent a request and want us to uh, petition a prayer to you, God, that you will bless their family. And God, bless their family in every way. Bless them spiritually. And God bless them financially, God. Bless them physically, God, in this uh, COVID-19 uh, season. God, we ask that you bless all of us uh, in uh, being healthy and uh, not uh, coming in contact with this uh, virus that has uh, devastated this uh, nation and this world, God. And we know uh, that you are the answer to all of this. That is the reason why we pray to you. Uh, God, be with her family. Be with Terry as he continues to uh, work and uh, as one of the essential worship, uh, workers, God, and God, just bless him uh, to be physically healthy, to continue to do what he do, uh, do, to continue to do what he does. God, and we ask that you pray for, uh, that we're lifting up prayers to you for his uh, brother and his sister-in-law. God, just bless them in everything that they need. Uh, may Terry and Angie be an example to you, and may they see you uh, dwelling within them, the Holy Spirit dwelling in them, and want to know what is it that has been, uh, that has made such a change in their lives, God. Uh, may our actions and our speech uh, be in such a manner where it's convincing, it's persuas persuasive to bring those that are lost to, uh, to you, God, to your atoning blood, that they too may be a part of the adoption process and the separation be closed and the anticipation of hope and peace is there, God. Thank you, God, for all that you've done for us. Continue to bless us. Continue to watch over us. It is in your son Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Everybody ought to hold on. Hold on to my God's unchanging hand. I know you can be the new hope on things. Sun, Jay.
when it's over, when it's over now. You have been true. Oh.